Again, very happy to be here and happy to help. Uh, I'm really excited to work with the FTT program. Uh, your, your department is really leading the way in incorporating ePortfolios for student center purposes. You know, ePortfolios have been around for about a decade, but they've been hijacked by institutions to get all this deep assessment data. But working with your faculty, they said very clearly that they want this tool, this uh, the system, to be for you for, and, and to help you with your. Uh, academic experiences and also how that, how's that transition into the career. So I, had, I put together a brief 25, 30 minute um, slideshow and uh, workshop. We can do it interactive. I also have, have plenty of time at the end if you have any questions or concerns. But I'm just going to go quickly through the what, then into the why and the how. Now before I talk about the how, it's very simple. Um, we're using a tool called Digication. You don't need to know any HTML or CSS to build a website. It does all the work for you. So don't really, it, it, no matter what your range of technical difficulty is, um, it's very, very simple. And if you do run into problems, we have three student workers on, by, on standby at ePortfolio at nd.edu that you can email at any hour and they'd be happy to help you if you get snagged. But the most important, the most difficult thing to do when you're working with your portfolios is really understand why and, and the what, what they are and how they, and why, why, why would you want to use them. So I just want to spend a little bit of time to help you really understand the types of thinking and the processes and what the potential that this tool can do for you. Um, has anybody had any experiences with uh, ePortfolios throughout their four years here at Notre Dame? Uh, probably, like, like Professor Collins said, probably not. This is something that came in last year at the university wide. As of right now, all sophomore and all first uh, first year students have built it, so you guys just barely missed the cutoff. But um, basically, what we talk about when we say ePortfolio is it's a, it's a place, it's a space, a system that functions as a workspace and a showcase um, to reflect, select, publish, link, archive, but most importantly, demonstrate knowledge, skills, and, out, uh, and evidence of using multimedia artifacts. So that is, things that you do in your different coursework, these assignments will actually map up and link to certain skills that translate to very relevant things you want to be bringing up when, as you move into graduate school and into, into um, career uh, placement and, and interviews. So I thought it would be best just to start off by jumping in and just showing you uh, an ePortfolio example, particularly from the FTT department. This is from Kelly Taylor. She was a senior last year. I don't know if anybody knows her. Uh, but she was, did the ePortfolio with um, the peer advising program. So again, I'm going to send you these links. So this, these slides and all the links will be in the slides. So if you want to go deeper and look around, uh, you're, you're, you're welcome to do that afterwards. I'll be sending that through your professor via email. But um, you know, you have your home uh, goals, resume, academics. You can customize this. We set up a basic template that had you set up with certain things, but you're free to rename them or reconfigure them or add to them. Um, so you can see here ND experiences. I thought which was relevant for for you, the FTT department. She. Did, did a lot of work of going back her senior year and looking at the internships she did. Uh, and again, not just putting these things as bullet points as resumes, she was able to go much deeper and you know, do that deeper reflection and talk about the experiences that she had at these different places that I eventually ended up uh, with her moving her to, helping her to move to her next uh, phase. So again, that's a, that's a goal, that's one example uh, of an ePortfolio. And I have a couple other ones we can just look through the screenshots, but that's the link you might want to take a deeper look at if you want to see what other students have done. <coughs> Again, here's students using it to capture their study abroad, um, more internships, service trips. So again, this is going to be supplementing your, your transcript. Your transcript is just that list of courses, course numbers, and grades. And this gives you a place to document and show uh, your skills, your accomplishments um, throughout your four years. So this is an example of a research portfolio. You can have a broad one that showcases everything. You have a very focused one that is, is at a very particular uh, specific purpose. And you can see this one is designed for research. Um, a lot of students are using it for academic planning and working with your advisors. And I'm just going to jump ahead. There's going to be three assignments, assignment 0, 1, and 2. We're going to skip assignment number 1 since we got this kicked off a little bit late in the semester. And that had to do with academic planning. Uh, one of the goals maybe next semester would be if we have the time and space to do some goal setting and planning on the portfolio. Your faculty, your advisors are very interested in having that to look at before and during and after your advising and mentor sessions to make uh, a better um, advising experience. 
So what goes into an ePortfolio? This is uh, a list of the skills that we have preloaded into the template by, um, by concentration. And with, with each of those concentrations, you have the skills that are your program outcomes that your faculty have uh, defined as every major should have these skills by the end. So again, what goes into an ePortfolio? At, at a very basic, uh, high level, look at it, it's, it's examples and evidence and artifacts of things that would show evidence to these particular skills. And that's what you'll be doing with this course, is taking some of your best projects and your work from this course and, and mapping it to those skills. Uh, so again, evidence is what we know and what we can do. So um, if you'd like to have a little discussion about this, I understand we're on camera and you may be a little reluctant, but I'd be happy to, to, to we can discuss this. Uh, but this is, these are just some of the things that uh, we start thinking about of that can really help you tell your story, um, show what you can know. There's a big debate between the two minute, two minute elevator pitch and then the uh, four hour layover test. You know, some people say it's very important for you to get that two minute pitch in, in, in those job fair, you know, networking situations. Then there's the other side that says, you know, imagine that you were stranded at, uh, at the airport with a, lay a four hour layover. Could you have a conversation with your potential boss or a networking uh, uh, recruiter that would be interest, interesting enough to keep them occupied. And again, I, I use that as an example because I think a lot of the work that you do in this portfolio of synthesizing, <coughs> thinking about, and reflecting over the different things helps you put that story together uh, and shows evidence and have things uh, ready at your disposal to, um, to be able to articulate when you're in these networking and, and uh, career recruiting situations. So here's a, a, a long list of different types of examples of uh, artifacts. Again, I understand there's going to be a signature assignment in your course that's really uh, developed nicely to fit and show evidence of it. But here are some other ideas in case you want to go further with your portfolio. Um, this is an example out of engineering. Uh, the engineers had an engineering project that they had to build a robot. So what this student basically did was he, you know, took a screenshot of the code it was that took to, to build the and function the robot. He took some pictures and he took his iPhone out and he did a little demo of how his auto, automatic guitar tuner works. So again, this is a great example of him taking work from his class and mapping it to a, a course outcome. And again, this was a first year student a couple years ago and he used this actual page to network with uh, an internship and get an internship going as a sophomore year because he was able to um, articulate his skills. So when we talk about designing and developing the portfolio, again, it's a basic website. You're going to be thinking about some very important big picture questions like who will have access. The system is very well designed. This is one of the reasons why we picked this vendor is because it gives you full control. If you want to make this public so anybody can find it and Google can search it, you can make it public. If you want to make it completely private so nobody can see it and all your only your professor, that's fine. If you want to make only your classmates or you want to make so make sure anybody with uh, nd.edu, you can set at any level what you want to uh, to set that privacy at. So I want to let you know right up front. And just I want to encourage you to think about um, wh what kind of target audiences. Again, your professor is asking you to build this portfolio for this class, but it's going to continue hopefully to your, your second class next semester uh, and then beyond. So is it something that you could um, span the academic and the career? Uh, is it something you just want to focus for advising? Uh, mentoring for, for, your, for your department. So you really want to think about these questions because, of, of course, uh, you know this is going to affect the style in which you write it and the, the, the way you present that story. And these are just a couple of examples of what some students have been pitching and tailoring individually certain portfolios or trying to make a mass portfolio that can hit and hit all these different dimensions. So again, we're going to kind of run through this component because we're not going to have you do the academic planning piece this semester, maybe next semester, but this is the work we're doing mainly with the first and second year students, how we have them do some pre-engagement uh, before the, the meeting so that we can make more transformational meetings, not just about pins and paperwork when you meet your advisor. You can get deeper with the passions and purpose uh, if, you're, if you're doing some of this uh, uh, deeper reflection. And that's what this, this model comes up with. It. If you do some goal setting before, when your faculty sit down with your advisor, you can go deeper into those goals and then you have a place to, to follow up with the plans and goals afterwards. Um, 
the other nice the met way that FTT is, is rolling this out is they're putting all the different sophomore junior seniors in the same network. So you'll be building an e-portfolio and joining into this network. And if you do decide to make this uh, public or gated within the majors or Notre Dame, that you'll be able to see each other's portfolios if you set that and create a little micro online community that's going to, we hope, set up a lot of uh, potential for networking. Um, obviously, we talked a lot about the networking between the advising and your faculty mentors. Um, and we have been t talking a little bit about the professional networking, alumni, and career services. But also, we've seen a lot already in the first two years, the power when you have this, this community within a course or within a major, when students see each other's portfolios, it really inspires and connects students in deeper ways that they normally don't get to uh, in, in traditional face-to-face -face classes. So we're really excited about the potential of this, especially as you as seniors, to show some of the juniors and sophomores who are also rolling out this semester to, to, to get a snapshot of the types of experiences and where, where they can be by the time they become seniors. Um, again, this may not be as relevant for you as seniors wrapping up, but this is one of the things that we're looking at uh, over the four years of different ways that students will be using it. Uh, to turn their major, use it to study abroad, use it for internships. <laughs> Many students, this may be more relevant to you, are using it to get better letter recommendations. They're f filling out their portfolio, they're sending it to their advisor or their, their mentor and say, hey, would you mind helping me write a letter recommendation? Here's a link to my portfolio with some of the relevant samples that might help you make a better e-portfolio. And that's become very popular, particularly with the pre-med applications. Uh, some students are also using it to organize a senior thesis or project, and again, we had a couple students last year who use it to get into medical school and graduate school. Uh, and then, of course, there's the potential beyond. We're working with the alumni also to build an on online network after, after graduation. This is a really relevant, um, some really relevant information that we just found out last spring. We interviewed Notre Dame's top uh, employer recruiters. Uh, there was 11 of them that are sit on this uh, employee Notre Dame uh, Career Center Employee Advisory Board and we showed them some of the things that we're doing with e-portfolios and we wanted to get their, um, their, their, pers their perspective on is this something that they're interested in. We've heard some studies out that a lot of, res a lot of uh, companies are saying a resume is just not enough. It's just a bullet point list. They want to find more. They want to see more evidence. So some employers are using the e-portfolio. So we wanted to poll um, the Notre Dame uh, most common um, employers and this is some of the preliminary information that we found that 91 percent of them said that if a recruiter that if a student followed up with a recruiter <coughs> after an uh, after a, a you know a career center job fair visit uh, with a link to the e-portfolio 91 percent of the, the the recruiters would take a look at it 73 percent said after they made it through that two-minute elevator pitch in a career fair setting networking setting that if they student brought out a, a tablet and showed them a piece of their work or a graphic design that they would be interested in looking at it. And again, 64% said if students included a link to their e-portfolio on their resume that they would want to dig down and look at it. So this is some pretty uh, uh, interesting and relevant trends that we're picking up on that, that, that again, today's recruiters do want to see a little bit more. And again, that's our hope that the work that you do in a class can hopefully live beyond that class and help you really share uh, some of your skills for, for these particular applications. So the way we set this up again is, uh, you know, this is one of the gateway launch courses and, you know, we're going to use this assignment that you'll be adding to your portfolio as a way to launch you into the network. So again, there's going to be a couple different assignments. Some of zero, which would be build the e-portfolio and join the template from, the, build the e-portfolio from the template into the network, and then assignment number one we'll skip for now, which would be add a resume and your academic plan, and then the first assignment would be take the relevant projects um, from your course and then upload them to the relevant skills uh, for your program outcomes. So everything uh, that you will need to do this is on the FTT ePortfolio resource website. We've done many of these launches around campus, and we found that it's really nice to make just a custom set of directions and custom all the information that you need for this. So uh, again, I'll be sending an email to your professor that I'll pass on to you. And all you have to do is go to this website, and you can go into the getting started, and it'll really walk you through it. Um, again, I I, I want to tell you, you don't need to be worried about the technical. So here are those three assignments that we talked about. Build the e-portfolio from the template. 
We'll sip, skip on the plans and resume and then go through the capstone and skills tab. And then you'll just use this getting started. And again, we've used this for almost 4,000 students have built you portfolios on campus and it's very simple, easy to use. We have video, we have pictures, we have text to just walk you through. Uh, that assignment zero should really only take you 15, 20 minutes. And then of course, the, the, the second part of the assignment depends on how much you want to put into it. So again, all the directions you need are right here and they're very simple to go through. But again, if you get stuck, let us know and we'll be happy to help you. And here's the template. Just want to show that to you as well. So we worked with a couple members of throughout your department, and this is the template that they created. They wanted to keep you as a start point with a home, a resume, a place to upload that resume, uh, the skills tab, which I'll go into in a second, the academic tab, showcase, workspace, archive and work, and a contact form if you want to have able to contact you through. So let's go into that skills because again that's what your last assignment's about. Um, if you go into the film and television uh, concentration you'll see the different skills and then you would just go in and simply edit by typing in the work or adding a file or a PowerPoint or uploading a video or embedding a video any way you like into that skill. And again that's showing you and showing your professor hopefully showing the department and, and uh, outside constituents that you have evidence of those types of skills that you can articulate and demonstrate. So again, all these um, directions are there for you. Uh, again, ePortfolio.nd.edu is the login. You can also access it through your ND Gmail. Uh, education is a Google app, so if you click on the More button, you'll see it there. And you log in, uh, you'll see you'll be inside a FTT course, and then you can go into that course and then uh, create an ePortfolio by giving a name. Here's that permission level I told you about, whether you feel comfortable about making it completely private, completely public, or someplace in between. And again, these are sections and tabs and pages and subpages, and you'll be adding those modules for content. So to wrap up, this is where I get geeked up and I just tell you that why I get so excited about the ePortfolio because I really think it's a 21st century uh, Swiss Army knife for, for learning. You can do a lot of different things. It's been very enjoyable for me to walk around campus to see students uh, see the potential in this and, and do things that they already have to do for that class and, and go a little bit farther and, and be able to extend those outside those classes, connect across classes and capture things that happen outside the classes. So. Um, again, all our information is up on ePortfolio.ndu. We have some announcements. The gallery page, if you want to see other students around the, on, on campus, you can go in there and you can see some of the award-winning best uh, portfolios. Some of these portfolios have 15, 20,000 uh, web hits. Uh, and also, I want to let you know we'll be running our second annual University ePortfolio Award, where we give $1,000 away to the grand prize and a bunch of runner-up prizes. Um, and you get a badge. So again, by just by building the portfolio and participating with your class, you'll be eligible for this award if you like to participate.